the two voices Alfred Lord Tennyson a still small voice spake unto me, Thou art so full of misery, were it not better not to be? Then to the still small voice I said, Let me not cast in endless shade what is so wonderfully made. To which the voice did dirt reply. Today I saw the dragon fly come from the wells where he did lie. An inner impulse rent the veil of his old husk, from head to tail came out clear plates of sapphire meal. He dried his wings, like gauze they grew. Through crofts and pastures wet with dew a living flash of light he flew. I said, when first the world began, young nature through five cycles ran, and in the sixth she molded man. She gave him mind, the lordliest proportion, and, above the rest, dominion in the head and breast. Thereto the silent voice replied, Self-blinded are you by your pride, look up throw night, the world is wide. This truth within thy mind rehearse, that in a boundless universe is boundless better, boundless worse. Think you this mold of hopes and fears could find no state earlier than his peers in yonder hundred million spheres? It spake, moreover, in my mind, though thou wert scattered thee to the wind, yet is there plenty of the kind. Then did my response clearer fall, no compound of this earthly ball is like another, all in all. To which he answered he scoffingly, Good soul! Suppose I grant it thee, who will all weep for thy deficiency? Or will one beam be less intense, when thy peculiar difference is concealed thee in the world of sense? I would have said, Thou canst not know, but my full heart, that work thee below, rain thee throw my side its overflow. Again the voice spake unto me, Thou art so steep thee in misery, surely twere better not to be. Thine anguish will not let thee sleep, nor any train of reason keep, thou canst not think, but thou wilt weep. I said, the years with change advance, if I make dark my countenance, I shut my life from happier chance. Some turn this sickness yet might take, even yet. But he, what rug can make a withered deep palsy cease to shake? I wept, though I should die, I know that all about the thorn will blow in tufts of rosy tinted snow. And men, through a novel spheres of thought still moving after truth long sought, will learn new things when I am not. Yet, said the secret voice, some time, sooner or later, will grey prime make thy grass hoar with early rim. Not less swift souls that yearn for light, wrapped after heaven as starry flight, would sweep the tracts of day and night. Not less the bee would range her cells, the furzy prick will fire the dells, the fox love cluster dappled bells. I said at all the years invent. Each month is various to present the world with some development. Were this not well, to bide mine hour, though watching from a ruined deep tower how grows the day of human power. The highest mounted mind, he said, still sees the sacred morning spread the silent summit overhead. We thirty seasons render plain those lonely lights that still remain, just breaking over land and main. Or make that morn, from his cold crown and crystal silence creeping down, flood with full daylight glebe and town? For on thy peers, thy time, and let thy feet, millennium's hands, be set in midst of knowledge, dream thee not yet. Thou hast not gained thee a real height, nor art thou nearer to the light, because the scale is infinite. Twere better not to breathe or speak, than cry for strength, remaining weak, and seem to find, but still to seek. Moreover, but to seem to find asks what thou lackest, thought resign thee, a healthy frame, a quiet mind. I said, when I am gone away, he dared not tarry, men will say, doing dishonor to my clay. This is more vile, he made reply, to breathe and loathe, to live and sigh, than once from dread of pain to die. Sick art thou a divided will still heaping on the fear of ill the fear of men, a coward still. Do men love thee? Art thou so bound to men, that how thy name may sound will vex thee lying underground? The memory of the withered leaf in endless time is scarce more brief than of the garnered ye autumn sheaf. Go, vex spirit, sleep and trust. The right ear, that is filled thee with dust, hears little of the false or just. Hard task, to pluck resolve, I cried from emptiness and the waste wide of that abyss, or scornful pride. Nay rather yet that I could raise one hope that warmed ye me in the days while still I yearned deep for human praise. When, what in soul and bold of tongue, among the tents I paused and sung, the distant battle flashed ye and rung.
I sung the joyful pond clear, and, sitting, burnished thee without fear the brand, the buckler, and the spear waiting to strive a happy strife, to war with falsehood to the knife, and not to lose the good of life some hidden principle to move, to put together, part and prove, and meet the bounds of hate and love as far as might be, to carve out free space for every human doubt, that the whole mind might orb about to search through all I felt or saw, the springs of life, the depths of all, and reach the law within the law, at least, not rotting like a weed, but, having sown some generous seed, fruitful of further thought and deed, to pass, when life her light withdraws, not void of righteous self applause not in a merely selfish cause and some good cause, not in mine own, to perish, what for, honor thee, known, and like a warrior overthrown, whose eyes are dim with glorious tears, when, soil thee with noble dust, he hears his country as war song thrill his ears, then dying of a mortal stroke, what time the foeman as line is broke, and all the war is rolled in smoke. Yea, said the voice, thy dream was good, while thou abodest in the blood. It was the stirring of the blood. If nature put not forth her power about the opening of the flower, who is it that could live an hour? Then comes the chick, the change, the fall, pain rises up, old pleasures pall. There is one remedy for all. Yet hadst thou, through enduring pain, linked thee month to month with such a chain of knitted purport, all were vain. Thou hadst not between death and birth dissolved the riddle of the earth? So were thy labor little worth. That men with knowledge merely play thee, I told thee hardly nigher made, though scaling slow from grade to grade. Much less this dreamer, deaf and blind, named man, may hope some truth to find, that bears relation to the mind. For every worm beneath the moon draws different threads, and late and soon spins, toiling out his own cocoon. Cry, feign not, either truth is born beyond the polar gleam forlorn, or in the gateways of the morn. Cry, Feign not, climb, the summit slope beyond the furthest flights of hope, wrapped in dense cloud from base to cope. Sometimes a little corner shines, as over rainy mist inclines a gleaming crag with belts of pines. I will go forward, sayest thou, I shall not fail to find her now. Look up, the fold is on her brow. If straight thy track, or if oblique, thou no saint not. Shadows thou dost strike. Embracing cloud, excited like, and owning but a little more than beasts, abidest lame and poor, calling thyself a little lower than angels. Cease to wail and brawl. Why inch by inch to darkness crawl? There is one remedy for all. O oh, dull, one sided voice, said I, wilt thou make everything a lie, to flatter me that I may die? I know that age to age succeeds, blowing a noise of tongues and deeds a dust of systems and of creeds. I cannot hide that some have striven, achieving calm, to whom was given the joy that mixes man with heaven, who, growing hard against the stream, saw distant gates of Eden gleam, and did not dream it was a dream, but heard, by secret transport led, even in the charnels of the dead, the murmur of the fountain head which did accomplish their desire, born forever, and did not tire, like Stephen, an unquenched fire. He heeded not revealing tones, nor sold his heart to idle moans, though cursed and scorned ye, and bruised with stones, but looking upward, full of grace, he prayed ye, and from a happy place God's glory smote him on the face. The sullen answer slid betwixt, not that the grounds of hope were fixed ye, the elements were kindlier mixed ye. I said, I toil beneath the curse, but, knowing not the universe, I fear to slide from bad to worse and that, in seeking to undo one riddle, and to find the true, I need a hundred others new, or that this anguish fleeting hence, unmanacled from bonds of sense, be fixed and froze into permanence, for I go, weak from suffering here, naked I go, and void of cheer, what is it that I may not fear? Consider well, the voice replied, his face, that two hours since hath died. Wilt thou find passion, pain or pride? Will he obey when one commands? Or answer should one press his hands? He answers not, nor understands. His palms are folded on his breast, there is no other thing expressed e but long disquiet merged in rest. His lips are very mild and meek, though one should smite him on the cheek, and on the mouth, 
he will not speak. His little daughter, whose sweet face he kissed d, taking his last embrace, becomes dishonor to her race his sons grow up that bear his name, some grow to honor, some to shame, but he is chilled to praise or blame. He will not hear the north wind rave, nor, moaning, household shelter crave from winter rains that beat his grave. High up the vapors fold and swim, about him broods the twilight dim, the place he knew forsaketh him. If all a dark, vague voice, I said, these things are wrapped in doubt and dread, nor canst thou show the dead are dead. The sap dries up, the plant declines. A deeper tale my heart divines. Know I not death? The outward signs? I found him when my years were few. A shadow on the graves I knew, and darkness in the village you. From grave to grave the shadow crept, in her still place the morning wept, touched e by his feet the daisy slept. The simple senses crowned e his head, Omega. Thou art Lord, they said, we find no motion in the dead. Why, if man wrought in dreamless ease, should that plain fact, as taught by these, not make him sure that he shall cease? Who forged that other influence, that heat of inward evidence, by which he doubts against the sense? He owns the fatal gift of eyes, that read his spirit blindly wise, not simple as a thing that dies. Here sits he shaping wings to fly, his heart forebodes a mystery, he names the name eternity. That type of perfect in his mind and nature can he nowhere find. He sows himself on every wind. He seems to hear a heavenly friend, and throw thick veils to apprehend a labor working to an end. The end and the beginning vex his reason, many things perplex with motions, checks, and counter-checks. He knows abysness in his blood at such strange war with something good, he may not do the thing he would. Heaven opens inward, chasms yawn, vast images and glimmering dawn, half shown, are broken and withdrawn. Ah! Sure within him and without, could his dark wisdom find it out, there must be answer to his doubt, but thou canst answer not again. With thine own weapon art thou slain, or thou wilt answer but in vain. The doubt would rest, I dare not solve. In the same circle we revolve. Assurance only breeds resolve. As when a billow, blown against, falls back, the voice with which I fenced a little ceased, but recommenced. Where wert thou when thy father played thee in his free field, and pastime made, a merry boy in sun and shade? A merry boy they called thee him then, he sat upon the knees of men in days that never come again. Before the little ducts began to feed thy bones with lime, and ran their course, till thou wert also man, who took a wife, who reared thee his race, whose wrinkles gathered thee on his face, whose troubles number with his days, a life of nothings, nothing worth, from that first nothing ere his birth to that last nothing under earth. These words, I said, are like the rest. No certain clearness, but at best a vague suspicion of the breast, but if I grant, Thou mightst defend the thesis which thy words intend that to begin implies to end. Yet how should I for certain hold, because my memory is so cold, that I first was in human mold? I cannot make this matter plain, but I would shoot, how or in vain, a random arrow from the brain. It may be that no life is found, which only to one engine bound falls off, but cycles always round. As old mythologies relate, some draft of L-E-T-H-E might await the slipping throw from state to state. As here we find in trances, men forget the dream that happens then, until they fall in trance again. So might we, if our state were such as one before, remember much, for those two likes might meet and touch. But, if I lapse from nobler place, some legend of a fallen race alone might hint of my disgrace. Some vague emotion of delight and gazing up in alpine height. Some yeeming toward the lamps of night. Or if through lower lives I came though all experience past became consolidate in mind and frame I might forget my weak lot. For is not our first year forgot? The haunts of memory echo not. And men, whose reason long was blind, from cells of madness unconfined, oft lose whole years of darker mind. Much more, if first I floated free, as naked essence, must I be incompetent of memory. For memory dealing but with time, and he with matter, could she climb beyond her own material prime? Moreover, something is or seems, that touches me with mystic gleams, like glimpses of forgotten dreams of something felt.
like something here, of something done, I know not where, such as no language may declare. The still voice laughed e. I talk, said he, not with thy dreams. Suffice it thee thy pain is a reality. But thou, said I, hast missed thy mark, who sought saint to wreck my mortal ark, by making all the horizon dark. Why not set forth, if I should do this rashness, that which might ensue with this old soul in organs new? Whatever crazy sorrow saith, no life that breathes with human breath has ever truly longed ye for death. Tis life, whereof our nerves are scanned, O life, not death, for which we pant. More life, and fuller, that I want. I ceased, and sat as one forlorn. Then said a voice, in quiet scorn, Behold, it is the Sabbath morn. And I arose, and I released the casement, and the light increased with freshness in the dawning east. Like softened de airs that blowing steel, when myrrhs begin to uncongeal, the sweet church bells began to peal. Unto God as house the people pressed, passing the place where each must rest, each entered he like a welcome guest. One walked deep between his wife and child, with measured footfall firm and mild, and now and then he gravely smiled. The prudent partner of his blood leaned he on him, faithful, gentle, good, wearing the rose of womanhood. And in their double love secure, the little maiden walked de dimmer, pacing with downward eyelids pure. These three made unity so sweet, my frozen heart began to beat, remembering its ancient heat. I blessed them, and they wandered ye on, I spoke, but answer came there none, the dull and bitter voice was gone. A second voice was at mine ear, a little whisper silver clear, a murmur, be of better cheer. As from some blissful neighborhood, a note is faintly understood, I see the end, and know the good. A little hint to solace woe, a hint, a whisper breathing low, I may not speak of what I know. Like an alien harp that wakes no certain air, but overtakes far thought with music that it makes, such seemed thee the whisper at my side, what is it thou knowest, sweet voice? I cried. A hidden hope, the voice replied, so heavenly toned, that in that hour from out my sullen heart a power broke, like the rainbow from the shower, to feel, although no tongue can prove, that every cloud, that spreads above and veileth love, itself is love. And forth into the fields I went, and nature's living motion lent the pulse of hope to discontent. I wondered ye at the bounteous hours, the slow result of winter showers, you scarce could see the grass for flowers. I wondered ye, while I paced along, the woods were filled ye so full with song, there seemed ye no room for sense of wrong. And all so variously wrought, I marvelled ye how the mind was brought to anchor by one gloomy thought. And wherefore rather I made choice to commune with that barren voice than him that said, Rejoice! Rejoice!